What's up champion? Welcome to this special online service and we're so glad that we still have the technology to connect like this and I'm excited about sharing a few thoughts with you this morning and I believe that you're going to be encouraged by this time together. Wherever you're watching this, whatever you've been doing today, thank you for just taking a moment to pause and to tune in to the Word of God. So I'm going to get going straight away. I'm going to pray for us and we'll just ask the Lord to speak to us through this special online service and this special time together. So Father, right now we come to you. We open our hearts and we open our minds. And Holy Spirit, we thank you for your voice that speaks to us in so many different ways. And everywhere we go, your voice is available. We thank you that your voice is there when we gather in large places or in public places but your voice is also with us when we're by ourselves and even when we're in smaller gatherings with our families so right now we pray that you will speak to us through this video through your word through our time together holy spirit have your way bring change bring freedom bring renewal we ask that in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ amen so we're continuing our series on a new me and we've been talking about change i want to start by saying this the reason we are pursuing change is not so that we can be accepted what do i mean by that we're not trying to change so that god would accept us let's get that straight here's the truth we are all ready, accepted, settled. God loves you just as you are. That's called unconditional love. There is no condition to it. All that it requires is you believing the price that Jesus has paid. Isaiah 118, God says, come, let us reason together. Let's have a little talk. Even though your sins are like scarlet, you know what? I've washed them white as snow. All about what he has done we receive it and we personalize it the reason we are however looking to be renewed and to change is because we have this internal sense of purpose and destiny a desire to see greater things and I believe that that's from God because we are the light of the world and I believe that the church is God's solution to the world Jesus Christ represented in his church so that's why we are passionately pursuing change freedom renewal and that's what this whole month is about to see lasting change we started off by just looking at Revelation 3 8 where God says I know your works see I have set before you an open door that no man can shut your strength might be small but you have kept my word and you've not denied my name. And to summarize that, we've talked about that all month, basically open doors and new opportunities is what we believe is available to us in Christ as the New Testament church this year. And that's just the word that I personally have been sensing God saying, open doors, new opportunities. So. Also the word see, which means look again, be aware that there are open doors, new opportunities. Maybe you've tried some things before. It's time to try again or to try a different avenue. Call somebody else. And I have literally been doing that. Um, just on different areas of my life, whether it's health wise or just ministry wise or financially, I've literally just started looking for new opportunities. Um, I've talked to some new people. You know, I've, I've had meetings with new pastors to hear, not new pastors, pastors that I know, but I haven't met with them that frequently. And now I'm just at a place where I want to meet with them and hear what's happening at your church. What's God doing on your side of town? Uh, what's working for you guys right now? What's not working? And, you know, I basically have to be proactive in that, um, you know, to, to talk to the bank, to talk to different um, voices in my life that gives me financial advice. Um, Health-wise, I've had to 
explore. I went to go see a new doctor. I'm so glad I finally found somebody who one had felt like he was actually listening to what I was saying and secondly he said I hear your concerns and I'm gonna help you. Where in the past you know I went to one doctor and and I was in a, in a pretty desperate place and you know what after everything the doctor told me you have to drink more water and that kind of made me mad because when I go to the doctor it means I'm pretty much in desperation here. I need your help and uh, so the first person wasn't the answer the second one no but I found somebody and I'm constantly looking I believe God wants to answer our prayers and and show us those open doors through people so question for you what can you do this month this week actually to just pursue some of the dreams that's inside of you and um, I believe we're going to see open doors and new opportunities as families and even as a church. I believe that this is an exciting year for Living Stones. I am super excited. I don't know if you can tell. So here's the message for this morning. It's part of the New Me series, but the title is Tell Them the Dream. Think about that. Tell them the dream. Maybe you know this phrase. Maybe you know where it comes from. But this was new to me. So. Let me share with you what kind of sparked that thought there. Uh, as you know, we just recently celebrated Martin Luther, Martin Luther King Day. And, uh, you know, it's a beautiful holiday. And in schools, the children reflect on the history behind it. And that's something that when I moved to South Africa, coming from a country that was very segregated, really growing up in that, coming to America and learning about the history of America and learning that there have been so many similarities and to go to Washington DC and to stand there in front of the Lincoln Memorial to stand there on the steps I remember we had a, a school field trip when I was still teaching a bunch of eighth graders and I, I had to kind of grab their attention and say you know we've been studying this but we are standing here right now where several decades ago, this is right here where it happened. You know, that, that famous speech, I have a dream. And maybe, you know, over the last few weeks, you've been reminded of that. What an awesome moment in history. But one thing that I didn't know, and, and Becca actually told me this this week, because she was talking to her students about that, was that Martin Luther King, obviously, you, you, there's a lot about the history that I won't get into now, but... God provided that platform for him to make that famous speech. And I don't know all the detail, but what I've learned now is that the eye of the dream part was actually not scripted. Okay? And here's the tell them the dream. Tell them the dream idea. And I want to come and I want to be the person that tells you. Tell them the dream. Tell them the dream. There was a lady that was part of Martin Luther King's inner circle. And her name is Mahalia Jackson. So this is new to me. You might know about her. But she was part of kind of his inner circle. And as he was giving the speech, she was in the background. And she was kind of telling him and encouraging him. And she basically said... Tell them the dream, Martin. Tell them the dream. I didn't know that. And at that point, he actually went off script and he just spoke from the heart. Now, that, that's pretty awesome. So, it's a few things. Think about this. Um, David says, I believe in Psalm 45, he says, My pen, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. Okay, this whole month, we've been talking about writing down, putting your dreams, your goals, your desires on paper. We've been giving you this journal and we've been saying, take your thoughts, take your prayers, your dreams, put it on paper in your own handwriting, personalize it, and then just lay that before God. God, this is something that's on my heart. This is something that maybe frustrates me. I want to see change in this area of my life. Okay, so this is where Tell him the dream, tell him the dream ties in with all of this. Aren't you glad that Martin Luther had that dream in his heart, but he verbalized it? And not only did he verbalize it, it was caught on a video camera and it was recorded the audio and it 
is now a monument in history. It's basically been edged into history so that today we can go back and still listen to that. Okay. You know, it had to start with a dream in his head and then it had to drop from the head to the heart. And aren't you glad that he was so passionate about it that he started sharing it with some people around him, his inner circle. And then when God provided that platform, that somebody on his side came and basically reminded him that, hey, what you shared with us, now you have to share it with the world. You have to verbalize it. So this morning, I am that encouraging voice to you. And I'm coming to tell you, tell them the dream what do i mean by that i'm here to tell you write some things on paper put down some goals put down some dreams and i know the world will tell you the same thing you gotta set goals you know new year's resolution and all of that i'm going a level above that we're tying this into faith and we're tying this into personalizing the desires that God has placed in our hearts. So I believe there's a there's a desire in your heart to see freedom in a certain area or to see renewal or to do something great or to try something new. And I'm coming and I'm encouraging you tell the world the dream. Now you might not go and stand on the steps in front of the Lincoln Memorial but you know where it starts. It starts by going from taking what's in your head a thought and that has dropped to your heart a desire and just verbalizing it that's very powerful pen on paper because if you if you take this journal and you put it in your own handwriting once it's on paper you've kind of taken what was just a thought and you have now it's kind of the saying you know jesus the word became flesh that's the beginning of that dream becoming a reality there's also power and clarity, clearly knowing. You know, in Luke 4, 43, Jesus said, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also, because for this purpose I have been sent. He was very specific. He was very specific on his purpose. He came for three years, a three-year assignment. He knew why he came, even as a child. We read in Luke 2, um, verse 46 and verse 47, where he was uh, sitting under teachers. He was listening and he was asking questions because he knew he had a purpose. He knew he was called to a certain group of people. That's where it was going to start, but he knew it was going to overgrow and just overflow from there. But he was studying. He was focused. And then it says, you know, in Luke 2, 47, he showed um, understanding and they were amazed at his answers. And then in Luke 2, 52, it says he increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and with people. So he knew, I have a specific purpose. And he even told the 12, he said, okay, you guys... You are called to this group of people, which happened to be the Jews. And then later on, he called some others. He ap appeared to Paul in a specific way. And he said, you are going to go to the rest of the family. Specific goal, specific target audience. So I believe that you have a specific purpose. For this purpose, I have been sent. I've said, it, I've said this before. In my mind, breathing equals purpose if you woke up this morning that tells me that you still have a purpose and that god can still shine his light through you this week so you and god uh pen and paper my tongue is the pen of a ready writer what are some dreams what are some desires and you know maybe you just got to start and even Write some things down just to see your life in perspective. I'll share this as a personal testimony. Uh, last year was pretty tough for me just health-wise, and I'm going to expand on that next Sunday. But um, I had a turning point. I had a few turning points last year. Um, so in July, Becca and I went to Lake Luru. I just felt we had to get away. And... Uh, we just got a cabin there on the lake and at that point physically I was just I was just drained and you know I just had chronic pain uh, just chronic fatigue I couldn't get through the day without taking a nap I like to work out and exercise and you know that was it was so hard and just constantly not feeling well 
So in the midst of that, I'm praying and I'm believing and I know it's God's will for me to be healthy and I have a purpose. I have a calling. You want to pastor this church? And um, but at the same time, I'm just feeling, Lord, what's going on here? I don't have strength. And we went to Lake Lure and the first few days I basically just crashed down. I'm going to be honest with you. Becca would go for a run or for a walk and it was tough for me to even walk half a mile. But the first thing I did, I'm going to show you because I have one of my personal journals. I wrote down, I wrote down, and it's right here, and you probably won't see it, hopefully. But uh, I'll just show you kind of bigger picture. One column I said, these are some things that have been energizing me, and these are some things that's been draining me. So basically, Lord, thank you for these things that are going really well in my life. And Lord, these are some things that are just not going well. And I identify... 45 things that I just wrote down and said, Lord, these are some prayer requests. Now, I started on a personal level, just health-wise, and then me and Becca talked, you know, what do we see for the next six months? What do we see for the next year? And, and together, we just kind of, you know, call, we call it vision mapping and, and um, you know, just kind of dreaming together. And I wrote down some things. And even church-wise, I just prayed it, Lord, what's the future of living stones? What do you have planned for us? This is what I see. You know, and I, Lord, I have a desire for us to grow as a church and to really impact our community and to raise up the next generation of champions. And I wrote all of those things down. And I would, you know, go back and revise them and add some. And I'm so grateful to say that six months later, so by the end of December, beginning of January, I was able to go back and look at that list and I actually counted and there were some things that we knew would probably happen within a six months period and there were some things that looked pretty impossible but out of the 45 things 19 I've now checked off my list now that is pretty awesome and like I said I won't share with you in detail some because some of it was just personal things but you know health wise listen this is just a testimony. I'm not, I'm not saying this to boast or anything. I give God all the glory. Since November, I have now lost 30 pounds. I lost 30 pounds in seven weeks. Now that's a miracle. That's a God thing. That's not Steve. Because that's, that willpower doesn't exist here in Steve. Okay? But wow, that was one of the things. Lord, I just want to feel healthy again. I just want some energy. And uh, I've seen such a turnaround. I'm like, thank you, Lord. This is amazing. You know, I lost 20 pounds from Thanksgiving to Christmas. Now, you know that's a miracle because there probably have been some years where the opposite happened, where I gained 20 pound, pounds from Thanksgiving to Christmas. I'm talking about weight, but I don't want to focus on that because that was just one personal example of Lord. I am desperate in this area. I need your help. I'm doing everything I know to do. It doesn't seem to be working. I'm praying. I'm reading the word. I'm doing some practical things. Lord, I need your help. And God intervened. He, he changed some of the desires in my heart. He sent some people into my life that I was able to consult with that gave me some new information. And, you know, he just came and turned things around. So my desire is that you will see the same thing. Um, David writes, I believe it's in Psalm 4, verse 1, he said, Lord, you enlarge me in the middle of my distress. And that verse became true for me because in the middle of just a time of feeling really down and just really frustrated, I, I was able to just look up and say, like David, I lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And maybe you're in a place of just feeling a lot of pressure. If you can just look up. And honestly, part of that looking up starts right here by saying, God, I am going to take what's in your word and what's in my heart, and I'm just going to put it on paper. Tell them the dream. Start sharing with your inner circle, somebody that can pray with you. This is something that's a dream in my heart, whether that's a dream for new energy, n new health, financial dreams, freedom in different areas in your life, just peace in your family. Maybe that's one thing. Maybe there's been so much drama and turmoil. Well, start writing it down. Tell them the dream. And, you know, maybe it's bigger than just I'm in survival mode. Maybe it's you're at a place like uh, saying, Lord, Lord, I've accomplished a lot in my life, but I believe there's more. You know, I believe you've called me to impact, you know, the business realm or to go into education 
education or you know to start a school or to whatever it is go back to school or you know start my own company or you know buy a house sell a house whatever it is or you know really just pursue a ministry calling or you know learning to play an, a musical instrument whatever it is if that desire is in your heart make it known let your tongue be the pen of a ready writer you and God on a piece of paper and be specific and just start dreaming big tell them the dream and if it's from God it's going to require other people but it's also going to inspire people to hear you dream bigger than yourselves because you know there's there are times when our goals are very internally focused and that's fine July last year that was me Lord I need help I need strength I need energy I'm struggling to sleep I need rest but when God starts answering those prayers then now you start looking outwardly okay Lord now you've given me energy and now I want to go and encourage somebody else I want to go raise up some champions I want to encourage the next generation I want to help people to experience freedom I want to help people to um, to strengthen their family I want to help people to grow in their faith so it's okay to say there's some personal needs but also a godly dream is bigger than yourself so what is your dream what are, what are the desires of your heart that God has placed in there? And this morning I'm coming and saying, tell them the dream. Write it down. Be specific. Dream big. And I believe that God will honor that. I believe God honors these children who live by faith. You know, the acronym for faith. Fearless adventures and trusting Him. And that's my prayer for you for this coming year. I believe you're going to see Revelation 3.8. Open doors new opportunities times when your strength might feel small god is going to strengthen you he's going to encourage you he's going to be right there to walk with you and as a church we want to do the same thing we want to help you experience your best year yet we want to help you to see freedom in every area of your life so right now i want to pray for you and i just want to pray god's blessing over you and your household wherever you are watching this and maybe there are some people outside of living stones watching this we want to pray for you too because we're all part of one body in christ jesus so let's just pray together father right now i thank you again for this opportunity to share I thank you for inspiring us through your Holy Spirit to dream godly dreams, to dream big. And Father, I pray for everybody that's listening to me right now under the sound of my voice. Thank you for this technology that connects us. Because we know we might be separate or not in the same room in the earthly, earthly realm, but in the heavenly realm we are connected in the spirit and right now through your holy spirit i pray you'll come and breathe inspiration breathe hope like david said holy spirit come and be the lifter of our heads help us to look up so we can know where our strength comes from our help comes from the lord who made heaven and earth father we believe that you are with us that you are for us that you love us and you care for us and we believe that greater things are yet to come. So I pray for everybody as part of Living Stones Family Church. And I pray for everybody that's part of our families and part of our circles of friendships. Just bless your body. Let your light shine through us. We thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And this time I just want to remind you that if you would like to give to Living Stones, you can still do that right now by just going onto our website, alicefamily.org, and you just click on online giving. And then also one of my personal ways to give is through text giving. So that's a very simple way. You can just text an amount to our giving number, and it's a one-time setup. You know, me and Becca, each month, we pray about our finances. We look at our income and expenses, and we ask God's guidance. And then we also pray about what, what God would want us to give that coming year. So right now, I'm in a place where I can just grab my phone. Matter of fact, I can do it right now, and I because I have the giving number saved. And I can just go there, type it in, and I just type in a, an amount, the amount that we've prayed about. And there you go. I send it. And... I've made my donation. So feel free to do that on our website. 
And uh, if you need any prayer, please let us know. And we're just excited about this coming here. And we pray that God will bless you and your family. And we will see you next Sunday. Be blessed.